Welcome to the SPNN Forum. I'm John Forty. With me today is Kathleen Spihar, Director of the O'Shaughnessy at St. Catharines University. Welcome to the SPNN Forum. I'm John Forty. With me today is Kathleen Spihar, Executive Director, Executive Director, just regular Executive director, director, Executive Director of the O'Shaughnessy at St. Catherine University. Welcome, Kathleen. Thank you, John. Good to be here. How did you get this job? How did I get this job? Um, I uh, have been working at O'Shaughnessy now for four years. And uh, before that, I was in the community working at the History Theater and Moot Performing Arts and doing some um, managing director work. And the fact that this is an executive director's position, that it's at a college that really emphasizes women's education, um, that it is a performing arts-based institution, um, but it's also a building and it has in its programming, all of those aspects together made me want to, want to uh, apply for the job. Now, when you say it, we mean it, the brand of the O'Shaughnessy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And, but the people O'Shaughnessy. think of that as this gothic stone monument that seats 2,000 people in a very lovely way. Absolutely. And it is that, um, wonderfully that way, made of all these sustainable materials. However, it is more than that. So it is a build, the building convenes everyone. But to bring people to the building, you need to run programming th uh, through the uh, through the, the facility, and so we, we definitely program series there. We have lectures, performing arts events, um, places for people to celebrate. We have graduation ceremonies there. So the, the O'Shaughnessy is a building, but it is a place to come for celebration, to share memories, to see a performance that's very uh, transcending and transformational. Maybe you learn something new, um, and to, to be entertained. It's all of those things together. Okay, and so it's a point of convening, essentially. Absolutely, okay. it is. And I know that you have a festival coming up, and when I, I think festival, I think I can bring my tent and pitch it on the lawn. Is that, that not accurate? You know, I think down the road, we okay. would love to have that happen. Okay. We have a lovely quad right in front, which would be conducive to that. But I do think that uh, when we look at uh, the programming that we have at O'Shaughnessy, uh, we have, it's really eclectic. We bring in dance companies and concerts. Uh, we bring in, uh, we work with in collaboration collaborate with other, uh, other partners around, uh, around town. We've collaborated with Northrop Auditorium and with, uh, with, the, um, with the Ordway, uh, with uh, Cedar Cultural Center Those are and uh, Red House Records. It's just been a, a whole range of partners that we bring in bands that are local uh, or a concert. Uh, we just recently brought in Patty Griffin, uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah Watkins, and Anise Mitchell for a, a wonderful concert that was called Together on Stage. And Patty Griffin happened to have a, a, a uh, another um, a kind of a cause that she wanted to uh, promote during that time. So the whole concert convened folks for an amazing concert and also promoted uh, voter registration. So those are the types of, that's the type of programming that we're getting into the O'Shaughnessy these days. We also have a wonderful relationship with a lot of uh, nonprofit organizations in our community that rent the space. So we have dance schools and dance companies in. We have a whole, uh, we usually have three weeks in January and February that are dedicated dedicated to celebrating the Chinese New Year's. So we have this Twin Cities Chinese Dance Theater, or CAM Dance, that, that comes in, rents the space, and we have a, an amazing celebration there. Um, we have um, Indian and African American arts organizations that also use the space. So I think all of that programming together is a way to convene. And it brings in people from all over the, the area and all over the state. We have pretty much every county in Minnesota represented in our database. We, have, we draw mainly from the seven county metro area, but we do draw from a lot of um, po neighborhood pockets. So from the east side and from the west side. It, it's been really amazing since I've been at O'Shaughnessy uh, that I didn't even realize that O'Shaughnessy did this. And now we're doing even more of it now that I'm there. So these events are, um, they're often entertainment, mm -hmm. but they're often often a mission-driven uh, you know, lecture or exhibition or some, something like that. In essence, in selecting those events, you are projecting a personality. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're the executive director, but I have a feeling you don't get to make all the decisions. It's, it, do you have to like herd cats in a committee? To, what, what is our personality? 
So um, I think that the personality, if, if I talked about the O'Shaughnessy's personality, so if I had to, let's say, make a Facebook profile for the O'Shaughnessy, and so what would that look like? And so I think that it, we would use the word like eclectic and, um, and inclusive and uh, likes all the arts, interested in social justice, um, interested in uh, education, um, wants to bring in audiences from 8 to 80 and beyond. I think that that would be some of what the O'Shaughnessy's profile would reflect. I think that curate kind of, I, I consider myself in a sense a curator. You know, a lot of, of spaces have artistic directors. So, I, you know, I used to work in places that had an artistic director that chose the season. And, uh, and or there's a, 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 a uh, facility and you have an artistic director that has just a very very uh, particular um, artistic uh, vision for that space I, th I look at myself more as a curator and and what I mean by that is that I'm going out and finding listening learning about other organizations other artistic projects are there you know what are, what are our artists doing what are the tour shows that are coming through and I'm looking at everything and I'm helping put together kind of a, a curatorial palette, almost like a, a smorgasbord or a, uh, a buffet, so that you could come in as a patron and sample many, many different kinds of performances and, um, and in your, kind, of your, kind of your cultural, um, uh, you know, to kind of uh, satisfy your cultural appetite. So I think that that's a lot of what I do, um, is the curation of that. So we do have groups that come to us and just want to use the space because they envision their show there. And and, um, and those are relationships that we haven't necessarily gone out and searched for. They've come to us. But we work with them on making their show just in as amazing experience as possible. A lot of times those uh, groups also want to do something else. They want to do some outreach. Maybe they want to have a talk back. They want to have a workshop. So we work with them on that. Um, then we have um, our university programming itself. And so that, it, we have some um, amazingly talented students and faculty members and generate that on campus. And so our stage is used to help amplify that. And then we also have our own series where we go out and we really search out what really fits the mission of what O'Shaughnessy is doing within this kind of very eclectic cultural palette? So, are there some dancers or a choreographer, you know, that would be interested in coming in? What kind of projects are out there? I want to get at that mission, all mission of the O'Shaughnessy as it fits inside Kate St. Catharines. Mm -hmm. But I'm always going after the most personal dimension of this, and my question is. All that curating, do you have to run it past a committee? Or is it, is, you know, is this your personality? Or do you have to yeah, make a lot of deals? Sure, sure. I think that um, when I first arrived at, at St. Kate's, um, you know, I was, I asked a lot of questions and kind of, got, kind of got the pulse of the campus. So what do we want to bring here? What are people interested in? Are there particular parameters to what we're looking at? You know, there are three pillars at St. Kate's. It's um, women, and it's Catholic, and it's liberal arts. And so I use a lot of that as my guiding, uh, my, my guiding but that's really open. And so when I look at that, plus I in, in look at community need and campus interest, you know, all of a sudden, you, you start to really open up and, it, and what kind of the choice of programming that you're going to go to is really going to blossom. You know, do I have a particular committee? I certainly run, I have a committee, an advisory committee that I run a lot of ideas by. We have a women of substance committee that I do the same thing with. Um, there's also, uh, you know, administration at the university. So if, if I have any questions, I certainly have a lot of support and I can always run that by. But I pretty much look at what the community needs, what our campus is, is uh, needing, and what our mission is, and then I fit in the programming there. Um, you know, when you're a curator, you always want other people's opinions. You always want to run by what do you think and get kind of a, a, you know, a, a good mix of opinions so that you're understanding too, am I just doing this because I think it's right or am I doing this because it's something that the community also is interested in? And I think that, that that is something that I always um, have to keep in mind as a curator. But I, I definitely bring a lot of projects forward. And, um, and sometimes they're also, they have funding attached to them. And so that also means that perhaps we can do more with that project than I'd originally had hoped for. When did the O'Shaughnessy become a distinct entity from St. Catharines? I think it always has been. Um, well, it has been. Uh, it's, a, it's the same 501c3, mm -hmm. so it's an, under the auspice of St. Catherine University, and it's considered an arts affiliate presenting house. So the whole idea is that we're there to bring 
groups to and, and entertainers and artists to our campus so that on our campus we have this cultural presence. And uh, we, have, we are a, an arts affiliate, so we're, we're at the university, but we're constantly looking for new ways to generate um, you know, resources so that we can continue our programming. You know, we're kind of, our financial model uh, really reckons that way, so that we're, we're independent in many ways financially. Um, so we're always looking for, for new ways to, to bring in groups and, and to always bring new resources to campus. Um, and that also kind of feeds in the, the eclectic nature of what we're also able to bring to our community. As I think about what it might be like to be you and empathize with your situation, you've got this vibrant personality uh, entity, the O'Shaughnessy, but it's it's affiliated, it's inside this institution that's mm -hmm. older and mm -hmm. probably more traditional. And so the obvious question is, Absolutely. what are the tensions? But I'm, I'm really more curious as to what are the synergies? How does O'Shaughnessy carry forward specifically the values of St. Catharines? Yes, so I think that's a great question, John, because uh, the O'Shaughnessy is definitely, can be used, and we are using it, as a way to merge uh, community and to merge the values of the university together through our programming. So for example, um, w this Monday we're gonna be bringing in a an amazing, it's gonna be an amazing lecture. Um, and it is Anne Bancroft, the explorer, who's from Minnesota, and seven other explorers, female explorers, from all over the world. And uh, we're gathering them together at the O'Shaughnessy for an hour-long dialogue about uh, their, what it's called their access, water um, expedition. Um, these, this group of 10 women, or this group of eight women have uh, made a commitment for 10 years to explore the world looking at global water access. That is all a university program actually, but the O'Shaughnessy is, is organizing it and promoting it and, and uh, getting, generating um, interest you know, to get audiences there. So that's a way that we bring, we bring value to the campus. Uh, the explorers and kind of the whole idea of the lecture is also about social justice, it's about women and women leaders, so all of those values really tie into that one particular program. Um, so the way that the O'Shaughnessy can amplify that, not only organize, but amplify that entire lecture is, is a way that we're continually uh, connecting with campus values and, uh, and uh, to the community and kind of also opening up accessibility for people to come on campus and to actually live through what St. Kate's is all about, right? By attending the lecture, by, by being in the audience, by meeting the explorers afterwards and, and being part of what's a traditionally academic event that we have kind of opened up and is mushroomed into this really large community event. Now, I'm going to just climb way out on a limb, but it seems to me the O'Shaughnessy is probably somewhat more feminist than St. Catharines. St. Catharines is probably somewhat more feminist than the Catholic Church as a whole, mm -hmm. but they all seem to be becoming progressively more feminist. Mm -hmm. Are you that effective? Are you pulling the whole world that way? I would love to be pulling the world that way. Um, it's interesting. I, I attended a uh, this wonderful... Um, in London, there was this wonderful festival called the Women of the World Festival. And that was incredibly inspirational because it was a lot about gender equity. And it was a lot about what women can do if, if the playing field is equalized around the globe, what women can do to, um, to improve the situations um, for not only themselves, but for their countries. And how when women's equity is put into a spotlight and actually supported, that it actually makes a more equitable world and it makes a better world. Economies improve, uh, uh, standards of living improve, everything improves when women are, are in a more equal, especially power position within, um, within a global community. And so that's a sensibility that I'm bringing and I'm continuing to try to bring to the campus. I think it exists on the campus, and I think that that's one of the values that St. Kate's has. But I'm in, in O'Shaughnessy, and the, the women that we're bringing on stage, that we're featuring in our Women of Substance series especially, um, they are, are, are women that through their art form, a lot of times are, are, are promoting this, this not only gender equity, but they're using their art to really embed new ideas, new thinking. And I think that that's where the O'Shaughnessy as a a kind of a, um, a, a kind of as a, a, a campus um, spotlight, you know, on the values of what St. Cases are doing and continues to do. I think we can continue to work on that through our programming. 
And we're going to talk about women of substance in just one minute. Okay. No, in 10 seconds. But in case you're just joining us, this is the SPN Forum. I'm John Forty. With me is Kathleen Spihar, director of the O'Shaughnessy at St. Catherine University. So, women of substance. Have you trademarked that? That's a great name. It is. It is a wonderful name. And we're, we're working on that. Okay. Um, we are working on that, so I'm glad that, uh, that uh, you are enthusiastic about it. I think that, you know, women of substance itself has different meanings. Like, what would it mean to you? Well, I mean, there's the most superficial level, but basically it means that they have content, that they're, that they're real. Yes, yeah. yes. And that's a, that's a great point. And so that's what you're thinking. If you ask someone that, that's 20 or 25 years old, they're not so sure about what it means. They're mm -hmm. not so sure about whether women of substance really is, is something that they're, they're engaged in. They're kind of suspicious about it. Uh, other uh, women that we have talked to that are in their 50s and 60s and 70s, they definitely they have their own idea of what that needs to be. So it's been interesting. Over the last year and a half or so, we've been blessed blessed with, uh, with some support from the St. Paul Foundation to bring in uh, some contractors to uh, help us kind of unravel this. So they've helped us, uh, it's Creation Common and Arts Progress, and th those two uh, businesses have, have helped us go in and um, convene different groups of women of all ages, of all backgrounds, to talk about what women of substance means to them. Some on campus, some off campus. And so women of substance itself now finally is, is getting its kind of own definition that is being put upon by the uh, community. The community is actually coming forward with their own definition of what this means. So it's not just me as the curator that's saying, I think this is what women of substance is. As, from my own perspective, it's really about that being, that that's, can be part of those conversations, but it's really being, the, the definition of what women as substance is, is really being fed by women from all over the community of all different types. And I think that that's what's going to make this, um, this brand um, even healthier and to make this um, idea even healthier. I mean, it's really, it was a, it's been a brand that's helped us sell concert tickets. It's been a, uh, a uh, wonderful series, but it really needs to to move into what I hope, I'm hoping it can do is move. It's become a movement in itself, a movement of ideas, a movement of art, a movement of of, uh, of amazing um, of synergy where women and men can come together and talk about what women are doing worldwide and support them. So before we started actually taping, I was teasing you about the absence of parking there. Yes. Is, is, is there is there enough parking? You. The, Given infinite funds, would you put up a parking ramp? What would, how, how do you deal with the, the fact that you're essentially right on the edge of a neighborhood? Certainly. Oh, we do have a lot of campus parking, and that's great. When we do have a lot of campus activity and activity at, at, uh, at the O'Shaughnessy, um, parking tends to be trickier. It's all mm -hmm. free, it's all wonderful, but then you have to start going out into the neighborhood. Absolutely. We'd be happy to. If we had an infinite funds to look into some really amazing kind of uh, sustainable parking structure that maybe would go underground or something like that, that would be fantastic. Well, it's a sign of success. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, okay. We are about two-thirds of the way through our conversation, and I, I want to focus the last third on the festival and all the events yes. that are coming up. Forward, promote, forward, promote, forward, promote. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for, for sure. saying that. Yes. Um, th one of the things that's come out of all these conversations, uh, these community convenings about uh, women of substance, is a festival. So we decided this year to put together a 10-day women of substance festival. Totally incredible we, um, initiative. We're so, we're so uh, blessed to do this. Um, you the, should mention dates. The, yes, I should. So um, the festival opens on April 15th, which is this Friday, with Meredith Monk and then runs through April 24th, and so it closes with Angelique Hijo. And every day um, during the festival, we have different events. So uh, with Meredith Monk being on Friday, we have, uh, then we, we move into um, a gallery opening on Saturday and Sunday, and then our Anne Bancroft and Axis team uh, lecture on Monday and Tuesday. They're both gonna be doing some, um, some uh, campus convenings. And then we go into a women's, uh, we go into uh, some poetry readings on campus, and then we go into a uh, women's theater festival on the 24th, and then we kind of wrap up with uh, Grammy Award winning uh, vocalist Angelique Kijo. So, there, and most of these events are free. That's the other 
part of it that we've been able to do. And it, so this this is whole festival's taken all of that campus synergy that we were talking about earlier and really wrapped it into this kind of consolidated time that you can come on campus and see some great art and and learn about these amazing women. The Women of Substance Festival is going to be the first of many years, isn't it? That's what we're planning on. Okay. So this is our inaugural year. We have a theme that's called Charting a Course, which is um, about women's um, approaches to exploration. So it could be personal growth. It could be intimate relationships or um, intercultural navigation or actual world adventure. So that's the first theme of the first festival. And you know we're going to be watching very closely on how successful this festival is and how much people really are engaged and what they what they liked about it, what they would like to see in future festivals so that it can help us build up some synergy. Ideally, we would love to do this as an annual event. I'm curious as to how when females of different ages, I'm saying females because I'm thinking, you know, teenagers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. college women, older women, is the festival aimed at older women? I mean, how, how do, is, is there a way to get some... Mm -hmm. Uh, bonding across sure. the generations. Absolutely. Well, um, the that's a great question. The, the festival was curated by this committee. So when it was, it, and the committee had some students on it, and it had, uh, we had, had actually women of all ages on it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we have been uh, choosing uh, activities on and, and events that uh, in performances that could potentially appeal to all ages, but we do have some, um, s you know, some events here like um, that, you know, for Meredith Monk or for Angelique Kijo, where those names are not necessarily going to be known by um, our college age students, but will be known by by some of the the, uh, the uh, some of our uh, other audiences. Um, but the Anne Bancroft event um, is a basically has explorers that they, they range in age. There's about a 30 to 40 year gap between some of the, between the, mm -hmm. the eldest and the youngest. And so that particular event is really engaging kind of an all ages audience. So I think that as we move forward, we're definitely going to be learning about our curation from this particular festival. So we will move forward in a way where we, we're going to try to appeal to all ages during our, our, um, our festivals. Um, so that that's one of our values is inclusion, so that everyone feels in included. You know, as the world moves more to, uh, uh, there's a, a key word for it, but like uh, just in time delivery of labor, people's right. labor becomes more lumpy. That is, it's, it's intense and then you got a flat spot. And it seems to me your work's kind of lumpy because after that 10 day festival, you work really intensely and then you'll probably be given a few days to nap it off and then pick it back up. Well, we don't operate that way at the okay. O'Shaughnessy. Okay. So, um, so uh, during this festival, actually, towards the end of this festival, um, we have uh, another event in our space. So uh, th some of these events are going to be on campus, but O'Shaughnessy will be actually uh, running a, a ballet from for about three or four days of the festival. And then when that ballet ends, then we have Angelique Kijo in. And then when she when that ends, then we have another ballet that's that's in. And so it just continues to move. Because you know, our our community has an amazing energy to it and it's always moving forward. And we always have to make sure that we can catch up. So there's no season in essence. I mean so, right right through the summer or do you, do you, is there like a couple weeks when our season usually runs from September through about April, maybe May. Mm -hmm. um, so our season, Angelique Kinjo ends the Women of Substance series and ends our season, O'Shaughnessy series, is season for the year. But we run events, so we will continue to have partners that come in with their, their dance performances and with music performances, and we'll continue to run community events all the way through the end of June. It seems the O'Shaughnessy would have an advantage for that summer program because it just seems like a cooler physically cooler building than, say, the state downtown. That, that, those buildings are hot. They are, and, and aren't so, they? They so, can be. And so you have an advantage in the summer that you don't have to spend as much on air conditioning, maybe. There you go. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that could be an advantage of it. It really depends. You know, the, the Twin Cities community tends to be an outdoor festival kind of, of, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, community. And so we have run some concerts and some performances during the summer. But, and usually we're really busy up to the end of June, and then we start again. We're really busy again starting in, in August like end of July, August. So so we pretty much, we almost run year round in, in regards to programming that continually is in the O'Shaughnessy. 
And people occasionally come to you and ask to rent the facility. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Do you have standards? So, of course well, we do. Well, tell me about them. I mean, so, <laughs> yes, we do have, we have, um, we we like to have a, 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 just a big range of, of community events there because as I was talking about earlier, uh, we we like to be able to service our our entire community no matter who they are and and what kind of event it is. Mm -hmm. So you know when you want to rent the O'Shaughnessy, um, we we definitely sit down. We talk about what the event needs to be. We talk about the way to do it that is affordable to to the uh, partner mm -hmm. and that's going to work for us. And then usually we, we try to schedule it in. There there have been uh, you know a lot of situations where we have uh, especially individual artists come. They can't possibly afford the space. So so we try to work out some kind of an arrangement with them. Sometimes that works, sometimes that, that hasn't. The, uh, uh, the arts and cultural funding from the State Arts Board has really helped that out a lot, and so we're able to accommodate more individual artist projects, either during the, the regular year or, or during the summer. So that has been a wonderful um, uh, advantage. Um, but we, we certainly have, a, you can certainly call us at 651-690-6700 and ask about our rentals. And, uh, and we, we would love to, to have as many groups as we can come to the O'Shaughnessy. It, brings, it helps us bring in new audiences. It helps us um, really engage with the community on a, on a, a deeper level. And, and that's what we're there to do. We're there to service our community. We want to make sure we do it. Will the stage support the weight of an elephant? Um, elephant, not sure of. Pink, pink horse, <laughs> okay. yes. Okay, so you've done pink that. Pink horse, yes. I can say that. When uh, Kevin Kling brought his love show to uh -huh. the O'Shaughnessy, which is a fantastic, uh, fantastic performance, uh, he brought in a pink pony one year. So it will definitely oh. hold okay. a pink pony. Okay. We got just a couple of minutes left, yes. but I want to ask about. Uh, are there academics that give lectures? I mean, I like a really just substantive academic lecture. Yes. And you'd think since they own the building that they would do yes, that often. Yes, we def definitely do. In the fall, we have a Miser Initiative lecture that that happens. In the spring, the Kelly lecture this year is Anne Bancroft and these explorers, so we bring that in. We have Goodman lecture there. So we do have periodically throughout the year lectures that are organized um, in conjunction with other academic departments on campus. And uh, this the speakers can be from all over the the. Um, the country. So it, it's been a wonderful um, collaboration with our academic departments. Well, Kathleen, it sounds like you're doing a great job there. Congratulations Thank on you your so success much. and much, much wish for continued success. Thank you so much, okay. John. All right. This has been the SPNN Forum. I'm John Forty. I've been speaking with Kathleen Spihar, the director of the O'Shaughnessy at St. Catherine University. We'll see you again next week.